Hello again. Today we will continue about meshing, including utilities to modify the mesh or to in interconnect different structural elements and other options. Once we have the mesh, we have different tools to polish our model, the connections, to couple or an uncouple degrees of freedom on different uh, nodes, create rigid zones. Uh, master and slave nodes. An extended way to do this, not only for nodes but with uh, with whole uh, structural elements. Once we will be uh, the host and other will be the inserted entities, and the software will couple all the degrees of freedom, and we can add other tools or include the. Uh, mass in our, in our model, definition of springs, and very important as well, uh, contacts and, and a very easy way. Before starting with the uh, explanation of utilities, I will just, before starting with the, the tools, I will just continue with one topic which was not uh, fully explained, because uh, some of you were asking some questions, it's uh, about the duplicated node. Uh, when we have duplicated nodes or when we have to merge the node. To see that, we create a simple beam and column connection. Just I will create my horizontal line. And I have created two groups. And they share this point, okay? If I define my steel material, I will define just the first section. I will now mesh my, my two beams. I will apply the same controls and I will mesh them. And here we have our beam. Okay, if we check here, put it in a linear way. We see that we have duplicated nodes here in the connection. One is the node 12 and the other is the node 11. To connect them, we just need to merge them. In this case, we can use any of the three types on nodes and we set a tolerance not very not very high and we match and it is merged and both nodes were merged into a single one this process can be avoided if we create from the beginning a shared a shared mesh to do that the two entities to be meshed must share some geometry in this case one point and to create that we just need to create points first you create the points here and now we create reference geometry in this case one line here Another line here. Now these are cube 3 and cube 4. Okay, and I will replace them. And this one. Here it is. The difference now is that the lines were not created independent. In this case, they share a common point. In the previous case, when we created the lines, the first one ending in the beginning of the following one, the auxiliary points were not the same. So that's why when we mesh, they will create independent nodes. So now, if we mesh, we'll see that already that we don't have duplicated nodes. If we open the help menu, the graphical user interface menu. We have always the help here, and here we can explain some of the 
concepts of these important tools. For example, the connection button is this. A typical example is for the definition of a rigid zone. We want to apply a, a force. Or we have a bolt inside here and we want to create a rigid zone with the definition of a master node and coupling all the degrees of freedom to other tight nodes. We can see to define a mass, the masses will be added to the structural uh, analysis and, and masses can be added into the different uh, directions. Uh, an important one, this is the insertion two entities, the inserted one and the host one, but we don't want to spend time creating a, a congruent mesh in order to merge nodes to couple the degrees of freedom. So we just need two, three data to define the first structural element as host, then the second one will be uh, insertions. Here we can see an example that, that the mesh of the rebars, the nodes of the, those structural elements don't need to match with the nodes of the host element, which are the nodes. We need a tolerance for the definition of the insertion, and we can apply that to into different structural elements. The definition of a spring, uh, in many ways, nodal can be uh, even rotational surface and linear. Okay, we have many ways of definition of springs. We have here all these utilities. For example, for the defini definition of a, of a spring, yes, for springs, you have the example of a beam supported in a Winkler soil. We and just with the definition of a constant, a stiffness, the stiffness of the spring, and just select the direction and you have other ways. You have this example. It's available in the work examples. And they explain the step by step how to define spring in our model. But we go to this interesting example which is available as well. It's the this is the concrete beam but we have created in using volumes. So we explain a little bit how to mesh volumes as well. Well, we start with the definition of the geometry. How is it is the geometry created? The geometry can be created as well using the box geometry, definition of point and the other dim dimensions. These are the dimensions of the beam and the definition of the reinforcement of 20 millimeters of diameter and stirrups placed with a separation of 50 millimeters. So the geometry is created. In this case, you have the, the model available as well in the platform. This surface is extruded along on one axis and then the beam is created. It's very easy. The other geometry for the rivers is created as well. The lines, those lines, uh, material or reinforcing steel will be assigned as well with a section which is the diameter of the of the bars or the longitudinal bars and the shear links. Well, the material, the material here following a non-linear behavior for both concrete and reinforcing steel for the material, just change here the analysis to non-linear to shorten loads and we can check the analysis stress and strain diagram will be flagged and we can check the table for the isotropic plasticity model of the nonlinear concrete. Choose the one for the 28 days. And this is the stress strain diagram. Of course, always you can change the points here. And very useful as well is to properly define the cracking properties. After definition of the geometry and the materials, we 
you find the section, different sections, the 20 millimeters for the longitudinal bars and the shear reinforcement which have another diameter. Of course, always you can change here the units. The next step is to mesh. What are the structural elements here? One of the structural elements will be the beam, full volume, solid 3D, and the other will be brass elements perform the mesh of the uh, rebars, both the uh, bending rebars and the shear links. Most complicated mesh will be the solid, but it's very easy because we just extrude a surface mesh, which is the mesh of the cross section. We set quadrangular of one centimeter of edge and the extrusion will have the extrusion size. It's like sweeping the mesh of the cross section along the axis and we will have the mesh as this of one centimeter of size and the same with the lines for each line a structural element will be defined with the different cross sections hide the concrete or structural element in this case they are linear set it in a linear plot these are structural elements and they are just lines but if I plot it with the real section and hand mesh we can see here these structural elements or the mesh of this structural element does not need to be congruent as you can see the nodes the nodes of the volume does not need too much with the nodes of the rebars. We can do it and then use the merge option. But if you set a bigger tolerance in the, in the merging of nodes, you can have a distorted mesh. But in this case, we just have to create an insertion. It's very easy to, to, to create an insertion. You just set the hosted structural element, which is the solid beam, and then select the inserted elements, the ones in blue, just once, and all structural elements will be working together in the solution. The main advantage of the insertion tool, another tool that is used in this analysis which is the connection in this example two forces were applied but for nonlinear analysis it gives better convergence if we work with imposed displacements enforced displacements here you can see set vertical displacements in the location of the load application to do that you just need to create these two lines which are the lines of the load application and here in the connection we can define a new connection one node which will be the master node apply the load to the, uh, to the master node and then select the slave or the tight nodes which will behave as the master node so we can do it with forces but in this case it has been done with the boundary condition with the imposed displacement there is a displacement of one centimeter now we can check here the different connections in the mesh if we select them here you have them this is my master node for one side we can have, we could have uh, applied symmetry in this model but we simulate the full beam and there's another connection here this means that the master node this is the master node and the tight nodes are the other ones so when applying the load it will be applied just to these two nodes but the displacement will be automatically applied to the tight ones I plot the symbols. Here you have this well the symbol of the imposed, imposed displacement in Civil. 
and it will go down all together and that's it we solve it will be a non-linear process now we can check results they are very useful cutting planes to check the views of our model and in different planes you have this uh, model in this statement and the video of the resolution as well in the video section so the next the contacts and we have many ways of contact definition uh, there's as well another video showing contacts in shell elements very interesting we have defined a glue contact there but there are many other contact types which besides the glue contact touching contact breaking contact advanced and cohesive you haven't explained it here the different ones today we will show you just a simple example of a frictional or touching contact so you can see the powerful capabilities of contacts and the easy way to define them we open the software again we will define two beams with a contact pair this example will be, you will see that's very impressive because it will detect contact even with the real profile of the of each section so i will define my two beams in contact create one line and another line half a meter above you have them if i find a steel material the same for both and profile this one and I will mesh both with the same properties same section and same size for the mesh I save it here I have my two beams meshed the top one will go down until contact is reached so find my boundary conditions I'll define this one will be a cantilever beam top one and the bottom one I will set it as a clamped beam so I constrain all degrees of freedom I can check them here I will instead of setting a force I will impose displacement of some nodes of the top beam so I will define another boundary condition but in this case with a single displacement of some nodes uh, in the vertical negative direction which is Z and uh, 30 centimeters these three nodes define my load case contact and I will add both boundary conditions one for the displacement can check it here here the symbols for the displacement the first displacement I must define my contact contacted with the one of the bottom I'll define my contact pair by default it's a glue contact but I want to define a touching contact friction coefficient here need to solve and just always check to create incremental results because it's uh, a non-linear analysis and we will need to see partial results until the last lot case with convergence we go here we check that we have till six solved results it will divide the displacement in six parts 
until the full displacement of 0 0.3 meters. So we can check partial result, for example, the displacement, and always set the scale to 1. So we have the real displacement. This is the first one. We go to the last one. Here we can see on the last, it went down 30 centimeters. We can check stresses. We have them, how they contact. And we can check always contact very well and we can animate it here and set one with the stresses set the scale to one maybe the last one is not good for the results we can take it out and here you have the animation you can you can save the video as well And another result, we can plot our process and moments. Okay, of one beam and the other. You have seen that it's very easy to define a contact and excellent results in, in beams, which uh, are very difficult to obtain. Um, we have finished this uh, chapter. Thank you very much. Uh, stay tuned always to our forum. You can send an email. We, we are always there to support you. Thank you.